our today's lecture is regarding bevel gear in our first lecture that was about the type of gears we did defined what is bevel gear where we said that the bevel gear is a type of gear where the power energy or the force is transferred between two shafts such that they will intersect each other when the shaft axis intersect each other the angle usually there is 90 degree in this diagram you can see that this is the shaft axis of one gear and this is the shaft axis of another gear and you can see that the angle there at the intersecting point is 90 degree so most fre frequently it is 90 degree but it is not the necessary condition there can be other angle as well here the diagram is of straight bevel gear which is a type subtype of bevel gear where the intersecting angle is not only 90 degree but the teeth are also parallel to the shaft axis so there can be any angle at the intersecting point of the two shaft axis now what are the types of bevel gears they are based on the intersecting angle and the teeth profile they are given as straight bevel gears spiral bevel gears zero bevel gears hypoid gears spiroid gears spiral gears are just like straight bevel gears but here the teeth profile is spiral it is the diagram of spiral bevel gear this is the shaft axis of one gear and this is the shaft axis of another gear the angle there is 90 degree these are the teeth you can see that it is spiral like in shape if the teeth were straight like this then it will be called as straight bevel gear so based on the teeth profile they are called as spiral bevel gear here one important point about this spiral bevel gear that at the start the contact is point contact but gradually it increases to line contact so it is less noisy and whenever noise is taken into account then spiral gear, bevel gear should be used instead of straight bevel gear so spiral bevel gears are used for higher speed and less noise spiral bevel gear is the counterpart of helical gears in some cases we want such gears that should appear like bevel gears but the shaft axis should not intersect each other so that type of gear is called hypoid gears where shaft do not intersect each other but they appear like bevel gears the shaft is slightly offset its application or example is bevel gears in the differential of automotive cars or vehicles etc so it is similar to bevel gears but shafts are slightly offset and not intersecting the pitch surface of this gear is hyperboloid of revolution another important thing is that the offset distance is very small now if we want to increase the offset distance the same type of gear will resemble tapered worm and now this type of gear is called spiroid gear now let's move towards the another type of gear which is called zero bevel gear which is patented and have curved teeth but there is no spiral angle it cannot take much thrust like spiral bevel gear so it cannot replace spiral bevel gear it can only replace straight bevel gear they are prepared the same way as spiral bevel gear is prepared with the same tool during design use the same technique used for straight bevel gear and then substitute zero bevel gear now let's talk about the straight bevel gear again this is the diagram of straight bevel gear and it appears cone like in shape if you extend this shape backward it will produce cone like this similarly you can extend this shape at the front as well similarly do this for the other bevel gear which is pinion as well now consider the pinion and draw its cone so the cone angle is equal to 2 gamma now specify the shaft axis and the angle with the shaft axis will be gamma on each side similarly make the cone of the gear as well and the cone angle is there is equal to 2 capital gamma now if you specify the shaft axis and the angle there on each side will be equal to capital gamma these are the teeth on the bevel gears now let's move further to find out some equations for the gamma and capital gamma how we will find it out and what are the formulae for it tangent of gamma is equal to number of teeth on the pinion divided by number of teeth on the gear to prove it let's move to the geometry of the gears draw a line on the shaft axis of pinion draw its radius line as well and draw another line where the two cones means the cone of the pinion and the cone of the gear will meet similarly draw a line on the axis of the gear as well and draw another line on its time uh, means radius as well these two angles are 90 degree now this angle is gamma this is the radius of the pinion this is the radius of the gear tangent of this angle is equal to perpendicular by base here this is the base and this one is perpendicular let me make a correction over here this the line the base line is actually the radius of the gear and the perpendicular line is actually the radius of the pinion and this is the gear radius this perpendicular line is actually r so pb perpendicular by base is equal to rp divided by rg if you multiply two in nominator and denominator it will give us bp by dg as diameter is equal to module and to number of two teeth on the gear so replace the diameter with its respective mn so it will give us mnp divided by mng 
since module is same for both the machine gear so cancel it out so tangent of gamma is equal to np divided by mg if you take half cone of the gear it will be right angle triangle like this this is the capital gamma which is half of the cone angle because we have taken half cone this is the baseline and this is perpendicular line so tangent theta of this capital gamma is equal to perpendicular divided by this baseline here p is equal to rg and b is equal to rp tangent capital gamma equals to p divided by b which in turn equals to rg divided by rp multiplying to n nominator and denominator it will give us dg divided by dp which is in turn equals to mng divided by mnp m is same for both the machine gear so cancel it out so ng divided by np is equal to tangent of capital gamma we use straight pivot gears where the speed is about 5 meter per second or 1000 feet per minute not more than that and noise is not considered if we do not want noise then we should not use this type of gear the noise here is appeared because of the line contact now if you draw imaginary circles like this on the gear or the pinion so the distance between this circle and the point at the back where cone is making the angle or the last point of the cone at the back is equal to rb here the extension of the cone and the circle circular line that we have drawn are actually imaginary having no physical existence now we can consider this circle having radius equals to rb as spur gear and we can draw teeth profile on it and the number of teeth on this imaginary circle will, would be equals to circumference of this circle which is equal to 2 pi r diameter pitch so imaginary or virtual number of teeth on imaginary circle of spur gear are equals to 2 pi rb divided by diametral pitch p